This is another um, experiment, you could say, on a try something that I've been thinking about. I actually tried it at one point, but I really didn't give it a fair shake, and I want to do it again now. The idea and the concept is that the kick plate is stainless steel. It's a low-grade one, not very good. The wire that's in my welding machine is just regular steel, pretty high-strength stuff, and that when I start welding on it, these two metals will kind of mix together, not completely. I'll try to weld it in such a way that you can see the separation. Now, the blade that I'm going to try to make is not very long. This is just a test. So I'll just cut like three quarters of an inch off the end of the kick plate. So I've got the piece clamped in my vice grips here so I can take it and pound it on the anvil after I make a weld. The idea is to make a weld, pound it on the anvil flat, then take it and put it back in the ground clamp, make another weld, take it to the anvil, pound it again. And so on and so forth until I'm happy with what I see. Okay, towards the end there, I got into a pretty good rhythm. Uh, that's the first batch you could say laid. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the grinder and sand it down until it's clean and then I'm going to try to get spots in between the ones that I already did to try to build it up a little bit thicker. I don't want a really thick thing here I just want something to you know more or less test the idea with. I did the ones in the middle and I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. I'm going to try to flatten it out a bit more now, grind it semi-smooth. The idea is that, you know, this is going to have some texture to it, like there's going to be some small voids and so on and so forth. Then I'm going to grind it into, you know, like a rough blade shape, and then I'm going to etch it to see what happens to the steel, to see if there's any discernible pattern comes out. Well, it's quite a bit later, I got distracted with other things, but I did finish grinding the knife and here's what it looks like now i've got a solution mixed up to etch it in and that's a mixture of muriatic acid and water so i didn't go crazy with the blade i just uh did it with the 80 grip belt so that it still has a little bit of roughness to it but this is just a test to see how this works out now take it and submerge it right in there and i'll see how long this takes I gave it about 10 minutes. It's not really working as fast as I would like it to. So I'm going to change the solution to hydrogen peroxide, which has oxygen in it, will oxidize the metal faster, and uh, the muriatic acid. Well, you can immediately see that it's starting to work a lot better. It doesn't quite cover the blade, but you can definitely see the pattern coming out here. Now, is it as neat as I thought it would be? Yes and no. Maybe the next time I'll increase the number of spots so that I get a little bit more definition here. They're all kind of separated. You can individually see each one. So if I increase the number of spots, then that'll show up better. Okay, I didn't even realize it, but I left the camera running. Well, this was working. Taking this out, yeah, with my bare fingers, it's just acid, guys. It's not gonna eat me right down to the bone. You know, I'll rinse off with water afterwards and everything be hunky-dory again. I'll try to clean all the smut off and see where we're at. At this point, you have to be very careful about the blade because it's razor sharp now. The etching tends to do that. And, <laughs> uh, it, does look pretty interesting, I can say that. Let me get in closer. I'll actually take a picture too and insert in here. You can see clearly the spots that were welded in. I think that if I increase the number of spots, it would look a lot more interesting. But yeah, definite possibilities there. It's for an interesting looking blade. You know, I'm looking at it and it's almost like the spots push the stainless steel away or something. It's almost like these spots are on their own. I don't know if they incorporate it. They would have to. I mean, you're melting the base metal, which is stainless steel, into the steel of the wire. So these spots are gonna be an amalgamation of the two, but they look so much different. And they look uh, individual. And even the ones that overlap, you can see how they overlap. And there's like a line between them. 
So very interesting effect. A blade made like this on its own wouldn't be very strong. It wouldn't be the ideal blade. It would be more or less for show. I mean, you would you know, be a cool looking blade, that's all. I'm just gonna take some 600 grit paper and put it here on my piece of wood and sand it down a little bit and see what happens. See if it makes the effect even more impressive or takes it away. It looks like it's uh, not taking it away, that's for sure. And there with my finger and wipe away some of the stuff. You can see, yeah, some of the texture of the welds coming through. Very cool, very interesting looking effect. Okay, it didn't take much to clean it up with the sandpaper and I'm really liking the way this turned out. I can say that there's one thing that could be improved if you were going to go with this number of spots would be to use a larger sample and be a little bit more random. In my case, I was kind of stepping back one, two, one, two, one, two. But if you had something that was twice as wide as this, maybe three times as wide, and just randomly started putting in spots and just filled in the empty spaces in between, you will wind up with something that looks so cool. It's almost like, uh, I don't know, river stones, uh, that kind of effect embedded in concrete, you know, concrete again. <laughs> But yeah, that's what it looks like, all these spots. Will I make a knife out of this? Will I put a handle on it? I'm gonna have to think about it tonight and I'll figure that out and see. Maybe. <laughs>